We have a serious situation if they're not here soon. Blood squad's here! Okay, send in the robot. Right now. Robot in track mode. What's the update? Tracking. Tracking. Target acquired. What happened? Wait. We hear something. Sounds like... Bowling? Bowling? Bowling. Introducing the most deadly accurate core design in history, the bomb, new from Ebonite. The manufacturing process begins at the filling pump, where the operator fills a mold with a precision blend polyester resin and mineral compound. A delicate balance of weight manipulation then takes place. The inner core is suspended precisely in the outer core mold. A state-of-the-art compounding system pumps and meters an exact mixture of chemicals. Using this same system, each chemical is metered separately and poured into the outer mold. Ebonite technology ensures consistent and controlled compounding. These parts are weighed, drilled, and checked by computer to guarantee uniformity. The core is cured in an oven and taken for assembly into the shell mold. Each mold contains a pin which holds all the components in position. The mold enters the filling station and then is placed into centrifugal force to guarantee the best performance in the veneer. The ball is demolded, placed in a curing tunnel, and denobbed. Further curing takes at least 24 hours. The ball goes through two stages of grinding rough grinding and finish grinding. This process brings the ball into an exact diameter. Shiny balls are buffed to a high gloss. The ball is checked for precise roundness. Next, the ball is weighed and measured by computer. The air spotter floats the ball so the heaviest point is down. A precision scale identifies the exact location of the ball's heaviest point and places a mark on it. The ball is then engraved with a hot stamp. Lasers help align proper placement for the engravings. Our balls are now ready for packing and shipment to you. Good morning. I'm Brian Purcell, Technical Advisor with Ebonite International, here to introduce our newest high-performance ball, the Tomahawk High Torque and the Tomahawk Low Torque. We used a wide variety of different player styles to develop these two different balls to provide a strong, heavy hook with predictability. The overwhelming choice for the low to medium RPM player was a Tomahawk High Torque. This is a high differential version, medium low RG, created by a taller core, two flip blocks, the top one under the pin being 3.0 density, the bottom one being 3.6 density. This creates a medium lope down the lane and a medium strong back end. To create our mass bias in the high torque core, we're using a 3.6 density side puck located two and a half inches off the center of the core. This is in the direction of the bomb. For the high RPM player, gaining control of the break point is of utmost importance. The Tomahawk High Torque Ball provides a little too strong of a turning force, making the break point on today's wet dry league conditions a little too unpredictable. To combat this, we went with a lower flare core design, which we've got a little shorter type core in our low torque core. We also have two flip locks, the top one being a 2.6, the bottom one being a 3.6, also helping to lower the differential. To create our mass bias, on the low torque core, we're using a 3.6 density puck, the same as the high torque. However, it is located a half an inch closer to the center of the core. This reduces mass bias.
Next, we're going to go through the steps needed to determine the ball's RGs, the radius of gyration, the RG differential, or the difference between the low RG axis and the high RG axis, and the mass bias strength. To do so, we need to start on the ball spinner. Placing our high torque ball on the ball spinner, we turn the switch on. Notice as the ball's spinning, the pin migrates to the top. The ball spinner is going to rotate so that the pin is followed by the mass bias, both rolling end over end. Taking the ball off the spinner, this spot right here is termed our preferred spin axis. The preferred spin axis of the ball helps us locate the mass bias in the ball. We need three different points in this ball, the X, Y, and the Z axis. The X axis is our preferred spin axis. The Z axis would be the pin. Using a quarter scale, connecting both the preferred spin axis and the pin, 90 degrees to each is the mass bias, or the Y axis. As we can see on the high torque ball, the y-axis is right on the locator pin or the bomb insignia. We're going to repeat this procedure for the Tomahawk low torque, expecting to find the preferred spin axis to be 90 degrees from both the pin and the bomb, or the mass bias. And the mass bias amount in the low torque ball is roughly 25% of that in the high torque. You can see it takes the low torque a little longer to find its preferred spin axis. We can see it took a little longer for the low torque bomb to reach its preferred axis than it did the high torque bomb. This is the difference in the bomb strengths, the difference in the lever action created by the bomb. In this vicinity right here is the ball's preferred spin axis. Again, that would be the X axis, pin being the Z. Using the quarter scale to locate our mass bias, ninety degrees from both the pin and the x-axis or the preferred spin axis is the mass bias again located right on the bomb logo In this next exercise we're going to compare the bomb strength or the mass bias lever arm compared to a standard pinout ball standard pinout balls are created by drilling the core off center creating an area where the core is closer to the surface and an area which the core is further from the surface. This area where the core is closer to the surface is where the center of gravity is located. Now we're going to spin some standard pinout balls on the market, trying to see if there's any direct correlation between the pin and the center of gravity in locating the preferred spin axis and the mass bias. We're going to start with Brunswick Speed Demon. In addition to spinning the Speed Demon, we also spun a Columbia Tour Boss, Ebonite Tidal Wave, and an Ebonite 8-Ball. 
trying to see what kind of correlation there is between the direction of the center of gravity and the direction of mass bias. On the Columbia Tour Boss, our preferred spin axis ended up in this position here. Taking our quarter scale, connecting the pin and the preferred spin axis, 90 degrees to that point is our mass bias, or the y-axis. We can see in the Tour Boss, the y-axis, the mass bias, is very close to being in line with the pin and the center of gravity. Now the ebonite tidal wave. This was the location of our preferred spin axis there. Again, using the quarter scale, connecting the pin and the preferred spin axis, 90 degrees to that point is our mass bias, the y-axis. Now along this line, notice the CG is slightly offset, or roughly 45 degrees from that line. Moving to the speed demon, we located our preferred spin axis and our pin. I'm going to go 90 degrees to that point. creating our mass bias, or the y-axis. On the speed demon, our center of gravity is there. Roughly 90 degrees to the mass bias. So our preferred spin axis on the Brunswick ball is in line with the center of gravity. Our preferred spin axis with the tour boss is 90 degrees to the center of gravity. Okay, on the eight ball, the preferred spin axis ends up there. Using the quarter scale, using that as a direction, 90 degrees to both points, which 90 degrees is six and three quarter inches on the ball's surface. We get our mass bias in that direction right there. Drawing a line from our mass bias to our pin, we can see that at roughly a 45 degree angle, our CG is off of that line. To determine the radius of gyration, the RGs, the differential, and the mass bias differential, we're going to be using the ABC RG swing. To do this, we need to spin the ball on all three axes, the X, the Y, and the Z, input the swing values into a computer, which will then tell us the RGs about each axis and the difference between each axis. So to start this, we take the tomahawk high torque, place it in the cradle with the pin facing straight up, Align our swing straight back, zero out our timer, and let it go. It is the speed with which this rotates that's going to determine our radius of gyration. The faster it spins, the lower the RG. The slower it spins, the higher the RG. The swing time for our low RG axis, the Z axis, with the pin straight up in the cradle, is 65.75 seconds. Next, we're going to swing the mass bias, or the bomb. We rotate the ball in the swing so that the bomb is standing straight up. Swing the swing halfway back. Reset the counter and let her go. Now we would typically expect this to swing a little slower because the pin is rotating around the belly of the ball. Now we see the final swing time for the y-axis, the mass bias. 
we ro rotate the preferred spin axis straight up in the cradle so that our mass bias and our pin, the Y and the Z axes, are now swinging sideways. Starting our counter, this should be the slowest swing time, being that all of our mass is located very far away from the preferred spin axis. Okay, our final swing time for the x-axis, the preferred spin axis. We're going to follow the movement of the preferred spin axis and the mass bias throughout the drilling process. Here we took our five balls that we had swung previously and laid them all out in a full leverage position and drilled the three holes, no balance holes. We finished spinning these balls after drilling three holes. Let's see where the preferred spin axis is to end up. Okay, in the eight ball, preferred spin axis moved about two inches. Let's create our mass bias. Connecting the pin and the preferred spin axis, the mass bias is 90 degrees to both. Original mass bias, mass bias after drilling three holes for the grip. Now the Tour Boss, preferred spin axis. Let's connect the preferred spin axis and the pin. 90 degrees to each would be the mass bias after drilling three holes. We can see in the Tour Boss that we have a little bigger difference between the beginning mass bias and the ending mass bias. On the Speed Demon, preferred spin axis. Once again, connecting the preferred spin axis and the pin, 90 degrees to each. Gives us our new mass bias. The initial mass bias was here, moved over to there roughly two inches. Now we're going with the Tomahawk High Torque. New spin axis after three holes are drilled. Connect the two of those, 90 degrees to each. You can see our mass bias moved from the original location of the bomb to that position there, roughly one inch. Now to the low torque, connecting the preferred spin axis to the pin, 90 degrees to each. We have a migration of the mass bias, or the y-axis, a little less than an inch. So we can see within drilling different type balls, our mass bias can move a little bit, as in these two here, or it can move quite a bit. Okay, we've completed our drilling process by adding the extra balance hole. In this case, we put it on the PAP, uh, same position for all five balls. And down here, let's keep track of our mass bias. This was our original mass bias before drilling the three grip holes. The grip holes moved the mass bias to that point, and the weight hole moved it back halfway in between the two of them on the eight ball. Okay, now to the tour boss. Beginning mass bias before drilling was located slightly to the right of the thumb hole. After drilling the three grip holes, moved towards the axis point, with the addition of the balance hole on the PAP, the mass bias moved more in line with the PAP. So this is slightly different than the eight ball, which started to move a little bit towards the grip. Now with the speed demon. Original mass bias was past the axis point. After we drilled the three grip holes, moved closer to being in line with the PAP, after we placed the balance hole in that position where we had mass bias, mass bias went all the way towards the thumb hole there. So we made a very big move with our weight hole on the Brunswick ball. Now we come to the Tomahawk low torque ball. Beginning uh, mass bias was right where the bomb logo is. We made that big trip of one inch over there after drilling the three grip holes, the balance hole moved it slightly back. So we have a very small cluster of where our mass bias was in this ball, both before, during, and after. The 
Tomahawk high torque, we see much the same. Beginning mass bias where the bomb is, the mass bias after three grip holes moved roughly one inch away. With the addition of the balance hole and the PAP, we move that mass bias back almost to its original point in the middle of the bomb. So we can see we have very little travel in mass biases uh, through the drilling process with the Tomahawks. Very little mass bias shift with the grip holes on the Brunswick ball, but very big after the weight hole. Columbia's traversed opposite of the Brunswick ball and went towards the axis point with the mass bias. And the eight ball stayed in a relatively small cluster. Our next exercise is going to take part in placing the bomb at different degrees from the PAP, keeping the pin in the same distance from the positive axis point. When laying out any ball with a bomb, the first step is to connect the pin and the bomb, drawing a line from one to the other. Next up, we'd want to determine the angle from the PAP. Our first layout we're going to choose is a zero degree bomb, meaning that the PAP will be in between the pin and the bomb. On a zero degrees, we want to just put the center of the quarter scale on the center of the pin and mark off our pin distance. In this case, we're picking a pin distance of four and a half inches. So this will be used as the bowler's PAP. Reversing the axis points, in this case, five inches from the PAP, we're going to reverse five inches left straight to drill our grip. Grip center line will be there, thumb hole below, finger holes above. Roughly static weights, we're looking about a half ounce positive and three quarter ounce finger. Placing the, bo the bomb at a zero degrees past the PAP. The second mass bias angle we're going to use in this exercise is 45 degrees. Let's start at the pin, connect the bomb. That is our mass bias line. Coming back to the pin, place the center of the quarter scale on the pin. Dial to 45 degrees. This places the mass bias line at a 45 degree angle. Come back to the pin and draw a line. This is the line that the PAP will be on. Now, as in this exercise, we're keeping the same pin position. That would be four and a half inches from the PAP. We come back to the pin, place zero at the pin, and measure our four and a half inches. This will locate the bowler's PAP. Now we can see we have a 45 degree angle between a line connecting the pin and the PAP and a line connecting the pin and the bomb. Reversing our bowler's positive axis point, in this case five inches straight across, we'll come to our PAP and measure left five inches. Locating the center of the grip, the grip center line, the thumb below, and the fingers above. Again, we've got the same pin position as in the first. Okay, the third mass bias layout we're going to choose is 90 degrees. Need to connect the pin and the bomb to start our exercise. Now we want to set the, the protractor at 90 degree angle. Placing zero of the protractor on the pin, 90 degrees on the bomb line. Coming back to the pin and drawing our axis line. 
is along this line here that will locate our PAP. Coming back to the pin, we're choosing a pin four and a half from PAP, making a line there. That is our bowler's PAP. Reversing the bowler's axis coordinates, again in this exercise we're using a distance of five inches. Locating the center of our span, thumb below, finger holes above. Notice that the bomb is slightly below and slightly to the left of the thumb hole. The last bomb placement we're going to use in this exercise today is 155 degree bomb placement. Connecting the pin in the bomb, centering the quarter scale protractor up at the pin, we're going to go to 155 degrees, which will be right in that direction there. Coming back to draw our PAP line from the pin at 155 degrees. And we can see that we roughly have got a 155 degree angle at that point there, very wide. Replacing the pin four and a half from the PAP. That would place the bowler's PAP in that position. Reversing the axis coordinates. Again, in this case, we're using five inches straight across, so we're going to come five inches back to the left, locating the grip center line, thumb hole below, finger holes above. We can see now that the bomb is almost straight across from the center of our span on the negative side of the ball. We have one additional bomb placement. Uh, we're placing this one above the fingers, 225 degrees away from the PAP. Drawing a line from the pin to the bomb, we need to create an angle in excess of 180 degrees. So we're going to come opposite and gives our, give ourselves a 45 degree angle. This is a line for the PAP. Pin position four and a half inches from the PAP, so we're going to mark a position four and a half inches away from the center of the pin, using this as the bowler's PAP. Reversing the axis coordinates, five inches straight back, places the grip center there with the thumb hole below, the fingers up above. We can see now that our bomb placement is up in the finger negative quadrant, up and above the middle finger. This is 225 degree bomb placement. The last part of our exercise is going to be to demonstrate the difference between using a balance hole and not using a balance hole with the same bomb placement. We're going to go back to drilling layout number one, which placed the pin and the bomb at a zero degree angle to the PAP. And then with this particular ball, we're going to add a balance hole 
on the PAP. And we'll be throwing this ball versus a ball without a balance hole. And the second ball we're going to use to place a balance hole would be the 45 degree bomb. Pin to the PAP, 45 degree angle of the bomb. We're going to place a balance hole directly on the PAP and chart the differences in ball reaction as that rolls down the lane from the 45 degree bomb that does not have a balance hole. This is drilling pattern number one. Full leverage, uh, pin four inches from the PAP and the bomb at a 45 degree angle. We're gonna start drawing a line from our pin to our bomb. Now we need to create the angle to the PAP, placing our protractor on our pin, pivoting to 45 degrees, setting the bomb up at a 45 degree angle. Going back to the pin, drawing a line to our PAP. I'm going to place this pin four inches from the PAP, from the center of the pin, along the PAP line to four inches. 
That'll be the bowler's PAP. And again, we are creating a 45 degree angle between our PAP line and our bomb line. Reversing our bowler's coordinates, we're going to stick with the five inches that we used as an example in the last batch. We need to make this pin safe. To make this pin safe, I'm going to draw a line straight down from the pin, roughly two and a half inches, and use this as a marker to measure back from my span. Coming from the PAP, reversing the axis coordinates, we're going to come back five inches to find the center of the span. Drawing the grip center line, thumb will be drilled below, fingers will be drilled above. That is drilling pattern number one. This is drilling pattern number two, leverage pin four inch with a bomb at 90 degrees. Drawing a line from our pin to our bomb locates the mass bias line. Placing the protractor on the pin at a 90 degree angle, we're going to draw a line to our PAP. Our pin distance is four inches, so from the center of our pin along this line, Mark four inches, that will be the bowler's PAP. In order to make this layout flare safe, we need to place the pin above the grip midline. I choose a distance of two and a half inches to mark down and use as a target when reversing my, my axis measurement. We're using five inches straight across in this exercise. So I'm gonna measure five inches back through my target to locate the center of my span. Drawing the grip center line, thumb hole gets drilled below, finger holes above. We have a 90 degree angle between our pin and bomb line and our pin and PAP line. This places the bomb below and slightly to the left of our thumb hole. This is drilling pattern number three, leverage pin four inches with a bomb at 135 degrees from the PAP. Starting at the pin, drawing a line towards the bomb. We center the protractor on the pin, rotate to 135 degrees. Drawing a line from our pin to our PAP, measuring a distance of four inches. Once again, we need to make this layout flare safe. We're going to draw a line two and a half inches from the pin as a target. Reversing our axis coordinates, we're going to use the five inch. So we're going to measure back from the PAP through the target a distance of five inches for the center of our span. Drawing the grip center line, places the thumb below fingers above. We have an angle from our PAP to the pin to the bomb at 135 degrees. Places the bomb about four inches to the left of the thumb hole on the negative side of the ball.
Drilling pattern number four. We're going to place the pin five inches from the PAP and use a zero degree bomb placement. Connect the pin in the bomb. We're already at a zero degree angle placement there for the bomb. So from the center of the pin, we want to measure five inches. I'm going to use this as the bowler's PAP. Then we're going to place this pin beneath his fingers. So from the center of the pin, I'm going to come down two inches for the target. Measuring back from the PAP, our axis distance of five inches locates our grip center. Drilling the grip center line. Thumb below, fingers above, and there we have the pin and the bomb directly in line with the PAP at zero degrees. Okay, this is drilling pattern number five. Pin five inches from the PAP, bomb at 135 degrees. Draw a line from the pin to the bomb. Place the center of the protractor on the pin. Line up the bomb line with 135 degrees. Come back to the pin and let's draw our line to the PAP. We're using five inches as a distance from the PAP. To the right five inches, locates our bowler's PAP. We're placing this pin underneath his fingers. So with the span we're drilling here, two inches down will do the trick for our target. Coming back from the PAP, we want to measure a distance of five inches. giving us a grip center line, thumb below, and fingers above. Placing the pin and the bomb at a 135 degree angle to the pin and the PAP. This is drilling pattern number six. Pin five and a half inches from the PAP above the fingers, 90 degree bomb. I'm going to connect the pin in the bomb, put our protractor on the pin, bomb line 90 degrees, and draw our line to the PAP. Pin distance in this layout is five and a half inches. In the center of the pin along the PAP line, we measure five and a half inches, using that as the bowler's PAP. Now to place this pin up above the, the bowler's fingers, we need to measure four inches down from the pin to make sure we get up above the fingers. We're going to use this four inch line as a target. We're going to reverse the bowler's axis coordinates, which in this case we're using just five straight across. Measure five inches left from the PAP for the center of our span locates the center of our grip, thumb hole drilled below, finger holes drilled above. We have a 90 degree angle here between the pin PAP and the pin bomb line. The bomb is slightly to the left of the thumb hole in the 90 degree.
This is drilling pattern number seven, pin five and a half inches from the PAP with a bomb at a 45 degree angle. Draw a line from the pin through the bomb. Center the protractor at 45 degrees on the bomb line and draw your pin to PAP line. We're at a distance of five and a half inches, so from the center of the pin along the PAP line, five and a half inches will locate the bowler's positive axis point. Now we're placing this pin above his fingers. We want to go at a distance of four inches from the center of his span above. So at the center, from the center of the pin, measure down four inches to give ourselves a target to measure through on the way back from the PAP, ensuring us that we're going to keep the pin above his fingers. Reversing the positive axis coordinates, which is five inches straight across, measuring five inches from the PAP through our target, creating the center of the grip, the grip center line, placing the thumb below, fingers in above. We've got a 45 degree angle here between our pin bomb and our pin PAP, which places the bomb to the right and slightly below the thumb hole. This is drilling pattern number eight, the leverage four inch pin, bomb 45 degrees for a full roller. Connect the pin in the bomb, and with your protractor, mark a 45 degree angle to the left. This is going to be your line, your pin to PAP line. We're going to the left of the bomb, because what we're doing with a full roller is trying to reverse the flare to avoid hitting the finger holes in the thumb hole. Place the pin four inches from the bowler's negative axis point. That makes it a distance of two and three quarters from the center of the span. So from the pin, we're going to measure a distance of two and three quarters. That'll signify the center of the span. We want to do a slight twist so that the pin ends up to be in an 830 direction from the center of our span. Placing our thumb hole there, finger holes on top, we can see that the pin is in an 830 direction. This places the bomb up above the ring finger. This is drilling pattern number nine, the full roller leverage four inch pin with a zero degree bomb. Connecting the pin and the bomb, this will be our line to the full roller's PAP. From the pin to the center of the span, measure a distance of two and three quarter inches. This will be the center of the span. We want to rotate the ball slightly so that when we draw the grip center line, we have the pin to the left of the span in an 830 position. Thumb hole below, finger holes above, the bomb is directly in line with the positive axis point for the full roller. Drilling pattern IRG full roller layout pin six inches from the PAP with the bomb 90 degrees. I'm going to draw a line connecting the pin and the bomb. Measure down three inches from the center of the pin to locate the center of our span. We want to twist the ball, twist the pin slightly to the left, approximately 30 degrees, to get the center of our grip and our grip center line. Placing the thumb hole below, finger holes above. The pin will be in the track to the left of the middle finger. The bomb will be in the track to the right of the thumb hole. This is a full roller high RG drilling. Here yet. Find out. We have a serious situation if they're not here soon. Let's go here. 
Okay, send in the robot. Right. Robot in track mode. What's the update? Tracking. Tracking. Target acquired. What happened? Wait. We hear something. Sounds like... Bowling? Bowling? Bowling. Introducing the most deadly accurate core design in history, the bomb, new from Ebonite.